Hey, hey there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back. It's another Red Pill Religion podcast with Max and John C. Wright. Red Pill Religion, where amongst the things we say are that belief in the supernatural and the transcendent is totally normal, completely healthy, perfectly rational, and entirely evidence-based. So please support our work on redpillreligion.com. Redpillreligion.com, where in these days of social media censorship, we believe this website is safer than any of the channels that we're on, YouTube, BitShow, Minds, any of those. So if you lose us, especially here on YouTube, please remember you can always find us on redpillreligion.com, where every day we post videos by us, videos by others, articles by us, articles by others, and yes, where we could use your financial as well as spiritual support. We especially have, at this time appreciate PayPal donations, although we know there's serious problems with PayPal. The, the recurring donations we get from some of you or just the one time are always helpful. We always take off, also take Bitcoin. Bitcoin donations are especially useful. We're looking to upgrade our microphone and studio recording equipment amongst other things, so that's always helpful. We are on Patreon. We are thinking about leaving Patreon still, but we're still on it. Those of you who are loyal to us on Patreon, we still appreciate you. And we are currently on Subscribestar, where you will find Red Pill Religion. We are still not approved. We are waiting for approval. They are a few weeks back from all the people fleeing Patreon, but we're there. You can follow us, and we would love to see you on Subscribestar. Also find us on gab.com at Red Pill Religion. Find us on Facebook at Red Pill Religion. Find us on minds.com at Red Pill Religion. Uh, find us where you find us. And also, uh, while we're here tonight, as usual on Wednesdays, we are joined by the great John C. Wright, a uh, uh, re retired lawyer, retired newspaper man, and science fiction award nominated and winning science fiction and fantasy author. Uh, say hello to everybody, Mr. Wright. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. When he refers to me as great, he's, of course, referring to my girth and mass. And that, 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 that wonderful, huge, ginormous Santa Claus beard of yours. My Which I Santa hope Claus beard is not that ginormous. Thank you very much. It is a reasonable, rational, <laughs> temperate length for Santa Claus beard. Okay. Well, you're all set for Christmas anyway. Oh. Uh, and, and so, oh, oh, you don't have the laugh down, though. You don't have the laugh. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, that's a little better. Um, also, <laughs> okay, that's a very John Wright. That's a very I'm John working, Wright Christmas. Yeah, you know? working on it. Working on it. Be sure also everybody to visit uh, uh, Lamplighter, uh, dot com. Uh, she's Mrs. Wright. That's her her pen name, Eljaji Lamplighter, and she writes and edits uh, uh, books herself. Uh, on Red Pill Religion, on, on SciFiWrite.com, I do see that we have, thank you for promoting the show. Uh, last week, we had uh, done something fun where uh, John, you know, basically turned off certain parts of his brain and made himself an atheist again, um, and actually gave me a better argument than 98, than, than, than almost any atheist I've ever heard. So that was kind of fun. Um, and we're going to kind of do that again tonight, but in, in the, uh, and we have a links to this in the low bar, uh, John put together a brief piece, not, uh, you know, he just kind of put it off off the top of his head, so don't pick it apart too badly, but um, he wrote down, Teaching Atheists to Persuade, which kind of ended on, with, with, with the thoughts um, that we had at the end of the last show. So, for example, in this article, which we'll probably go over a little bit, um, uh, he notes what I think we would both agree, and actually everybody I know agrees with this one. The best argument that atheists have um, for their, wor their worldview is the argument from evil. Truly yeah. it is. It is the hardest one to well, be. It is the hardest one to persuade with. Go ahead, John. What we all I was going to say is, in this short article, I merely listed, I merely stated as concisely and clearly as I could the strongest atheist arguments in order, of, in, my, in my judgment, of their strength, and I myself think the argument from evil is a is a powerful argument. And if you have to disbelieve in God, this is this is a actually good reason to, especially if you yourself have suffered some horrific uh, calamity, such as, for example, been falsely accused, whipped in public, and then crucified on a cross and and died horribly. That I mean, if if anyone would think God had abandoned him, that would uh, that would persuade me. Being uh, forced to watch your child go through that, or uh, losing yeah, your child, any of yeah. that. Any of that, any of that. I mean, the, the the Christian worldview is not a bright, sunny day, happy, smirky worldview. I don't, I don't know what you've heard about us, but that's not what we believe. We think life is pain, and that anyone who says anything else is selling something. 
Uh, that's also the worldview of the Dread Pirate Roberts from uh, Princess Bride. So that we have that in common with 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 him. Oh, uh, did the Dread Pirate Pirate Roberts in in, he in said, the Princess he said, Bride life, make that? Life is pain, Princess, and anyone who says anything else is selling something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> life is pain. Well, let me let me go over that. Well, then. We, we, I mean, the Christians call it a valley of sorrow, a valley of tears. You know, the the the, the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, every, look, everyone you know is born with a, the mortal disease of mortality and is going to be dead someday. Even the boldest, yeah. even the boldest, bravest, and the finest person you ever knew, e even Job, who everyone knows was a great guy, look what happened to him. Terrible things. Terrible things. Yeah, so, let me go. Christians yeah. don't say, Christians don't say we have a way to to stop suffering. We, ha we say we have a way to save you from sin. That's a little, that's a slightly different thing. Now, of the other arguments, some people in my comments, and I got a, I got a, a healthy number of comments on these arguments, uh, oh, yeah. did mention other arguments, which I myself think are a little weaker, and we can also, uh, we can also mention some of those if we, if we, uh, if we want to get into some of the other nitty gritty, uh, you know, arguments. Hi, right, yeah, obviously you set off a firestorm of comments, 144 of them. Um, let me point out one thing um, in 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 the favor of of certain people who are negative on Christianity. Uh, there is a strain of Christianity, um, which we've talked about here. In fact, if, oh, uh, I want to mention, by, uh, yeah, uh, we, do, uh, we recently had two shows about this, um, and on the subject of certain of the Sola Scriptura Christianity and the subject of Mary and those who deny her. Um, the, 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 the thing is, there is a strain of Christianity, and a lot of people find it almost pretty off-putting. <laughs> that is of the variety that uh, that that Michael Voris calls happy clappy Jesus, <laughs> and I mean I was even in a Catholic church once and 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 at some uh, some party festival where they were giving where they were doing basically light Christian folk rock stuff, which by the way I hate that, but whatever I was there, and the girl there says Jesus just makes everything better, and if anything's bothering you, just realize Jesus is going to take care of all of us, and I'm like, well. Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. In the long run. In the long run, yes. 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 If you yes. notice in the book of Revelations and also in many of the Psalms and in many of the prophecies, terrible things are prophesied to, to happen to people. And then at the end, there's a promise of hope and salvation. You know, the book of Revelations is actually quite cheering because we win at the end. But there's one third of the sea turning to blood and the moon getting as black as sackcloth and the... Uh, all the fish dying and uh, wild beasts consuming a third of mankind and so on and so forth, that dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. That happens before before the happy ending, not to mention uh, Satan breaking loose and all hell breaking loose. So, you know, you, you take the, the bitter with the sweet. You eat the bitter herbs before you eat the Passover lamb. It's, it's just part of life. Now, just a few days ago, we also had a stream with an atheist who goes by the name Skylar Fiction. By the way, a pleasant fellow, which is not true of a lot of atheist YouTubers, but a quite pleasant and reasonable fellow. Yeah. And I enjoyed the fact that he was he 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 came on the show and we just had a talk. I didn't we didn't argue. Uh, eh, we qu quarreled a little, but not really. It was a good show. Um, and he came right out and he came straight to it. He did not. He went right for the jugular, and I appreciated that. Actually, he didn't mess around. He said. I no longer believe in the God of the Bible because I think the God of the Bible is clearly immoral by his own standards and not worthy of uh, worshiping, uh, even if he were real. And I don't think he was real uh, because, because, and this was his argument, maybe you'll yeah. like this. I, I, I may even defend this argument to you. I may turn atheist and defend it to you because uh, we, we might do that. Um, but I mean, he just basically said, look, uh, I don't, this God is evil. He kills children. He allows all sorts of things to happen by his own standards. In the New Testament, he can't, claims to be a good guy. Well, but in the Old Testament, he literally orders people to murder babies. Um, that's that's in First uh, First Samuel, I think. Um, and there's all sorts of ordering. Actually, you read the first seven, eight books of the Bible, at least through at least through Kings, if not Chronicles. Man, you've got God ordering a lot of killing. I mean, literally, the, the book of, a lot of killing, huh? The book of Joshua, particularly. Man, yes. You know, I, uh, 
yeah, I mean, you've even got, I think it's in the first chapter of Samuel, you have God literally ordering infants to be put to the sword. Um, so of, uh, actually, I'll just pretend I agree with him. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually see what you would say to that, sir. Yeah, your God is evil. That, we're we're going to do this. I'm going to go back to being an atheist myself. I'm going to go back to being an atheist myself. I was one for quite some time, after all. And this was one of the arguments I used to make. So well, it's going to be similar I'm, to spoilers. I'm, I'm going to have to put you on the spot and ask you to quote me the exact, the exact quote. Because uh, after having argued with uh, Protestants and atheists for a while, I want to see what it is in context. Or maybe you can just tell me. Why is God asking Samuel to put babies to the sword? Which babies? Well, let me see. Um, uh, I, I would actually have to find it. I believe it's either in First Samuel was it, or First was King. It during, was it during wartime when they were trying to conquer the country from the uh, the uh, uh, the Philistines who were there previously? Uh, yes, absolutely. In fact, if you read any of those books, uh, whether it's the Pentateuch or books after, uh, like Samuel and Kings, uh, yeah, they're, they are reconquering, they are conquering the Holy Land and they are running through, uh, uh, and, and killing. What are the, uh, what are the other options that, uh, aside from, aside from killing the children, if you're not going to kill the children, raise them as your own? After you kill a parent, oh, yeah. that doesn't seem feasible to me. Well, uh, the, uh, uh, I should probably actually uh, just find the the, the length, uh, the, the quote for you. I believe it's going to be one Samuel fifteen. So let me see if I can find that one Samuel fifteen. Okay. Uh, and all right. All right, 1 Samuel 15, 3 through 4. It'll use the New International Version, which I don't like that translation, but I'll, I'll, I'll throw it out there anyway. And just read it there. 1 Samuel chapter 15, um, verse 3. Uh, now go, attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. So God just ain't messing around there. Everything, even their livestock and their okay. children, kill them. Yeah, the reason for killing the livestock was so that the Jews did not have any financial incentive to make war on the enemy. They weren't doing it for loot. Does well, that, does that, I mean, is, is, is God evil because he's mean to sheep? Let's, let's handle the livestock first. Is God evil because he's mean to, to animals? Because animals are going to die anyway. Okay, I don't know. Uh, what I can tell you is, sir, and again, I'm going to play atheist for you, and this is your problem. I mean, I've read your Bible, sir, and I, 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 I'm not impressed with it. Your God seems really awful. Jesus seems pretty okay. Oh, well, uh, Jesus seems pretty okay, and he says things about whoever, like, uh, you know, he has, he gets around the What's children. Not, please, he says, please do not change the topic. Uh, is, it, is it morally wrong to kill? Is it morally wrong to kill the livestock of your enemy in wartime? Well, I don't know about the livestock, but how about the babies? Okay. Let, then let's the, let's dismiss the livestock question. Uh, what about killing the men of the enemy in, in, in time of war? Well, I can see the reason for doing that, because the men are going to be the one who are going to probably come back and seek revenge on you. Okay. So I can see why you would do that. Especially the men of that tribe have sworn themselves well, as your. The only reason I'm asking is because some people say that any killing is automatically immoral, and I don't believe that the Christians teach that. I believe Christians believe in the, in the just war theory. But yeah, and I think war is just. I think yeah. even as an atheist, I'm going to go ahead and agree with you as an atheist that sometimes killing is necessary. Yeah. Uh, sometimes killing is even a good idea. And uh, uh, as an atheist, I'll give it to you. Maybe yeah. these Amalekites are so savage that you can just kind of wipe them out. So the let, men. Me you, let me give you three other facts in the background of this situation so that we're not reading this as a, as a scrap out of context. First, the Amalekites, unless I'm mistaken, are the tribe that attacked the Israelis in the desert when they were migrating from Egypt and harassed their women and children and uh, killed them. Okay. Second, okay. in the time of Esther and the uh, king of Persia, which is recited in the book of Esther, Haman, the guy who is going to have all the Jews in, in the known world destroyed, is in fact the child of an Amalekite who was spared. So that 
if a god who can see the future and past at one go foresees that uh, mercy to the Amalekites is going to end up with all the Jews being utterly obliterated in the future, it may be a perfectly rational thing and therefore morally valid for him to order their complete destruction. Agree? Because because it's at that point it's it's them or or the Jews, right? Um, okay, wait a minute. You want me to agree that it's still okay to kill all these babies? Um, uh, you want me to agree with that? Because that's what I'm focusing on, man. I can get the men. I want I, I, I want you to answer the questions I'm asking you. Uh, I mean, do it, yeah, otherwise, I'm going to order the judge to regard you as a hostile witness. Yeah, I'd like to answer the question that I ask about about the morality of it. All right, so is ask it, me the question it, again so I get it. Given the, given that that if God is real, he could foresee and know with perfect knowledge that one of the descendants of the Amalekites who are spared, because the Jews do not obey this order, by the way, uh, oh. ends up threatening all of the Jews in the known world at the time of Esther, in the book of Esther, and that that would not have happened had they actually obeyed him and destroyed the root and branch. Okay. Does, does, does foreknowledge of the remote eventualities of events change the moral calculation, the moral calculus of killing children? I would have to say, honestly, sir, maybe it does. Let me think this through. You're saying that later on in the book of Esther, we find out the Jews didn't do it? They didn't, and, they didn't, they didn't kill all of them, and one of them escaped, and uh, Agog, I think his name was. Now I could be wrong. I might be confusing the Amalekites with another, with another group of Jewish enemies. But I think it's an Amalekite. I could be wrong. Because okay, my, but I'm not, I'm not a biblical scholar. <laughs> uh, right, right. So, but I believe I believe that in the Book of Esther, Haman, the the evil uh, chancellor who persuades the king to kill all the Jews, root and branch, is a descendant of someone that the uh, the leaders of the Jews spared in return for a ransom. Well, uh, uh, you, you know what? I'll, I'll give. I'll, I'll spot you this point and say that even if this isn't the story like that, if you do look at all the stories where uh, God orders slaughters, which He does quite okay. a few times, um, if you look throughout the text, it's almost usually it's, it's almost always obvious from context that they're given a chance. They, they're warned repeatedly that they need to surrender. Okay. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I was going. I was going to list the third factor in this background. According to the Bible, according to the same story that reports that this was God's order, the uh, Philistines who were living in the Holy Land when the when the uh, Israelis were in Egypt uh, committed routine child sacrifice, uh, and that is a that is a cultural tradition of theirs, which means in order to wipe out that you have to you have to you have to stop the culture. You can't just punish specific individuals, because even those who had not done it themselves would carry it on as part of their religion, part of their teaching part of their way of life. See? So that the next question is, and this is a hard one, this is a hard one for a Christian answer, is is it okay for a God to punish nations rather than the specific individuals who commit the specific crimes? Now I myself would think that a human legal system has to only punish specific individuals who commit specific crimes. But I do know that in the military, for example, you punish whole ships if the ship is cowardly or whole companies if the company is disorderly. And sometimes teachers in classrooms Punish the whole class if the class does something as a group that's that's uh, disobedient or troublesome. So my next question then is: Is it is it okay for a divine being to punish a group of people when the group is doing something wrong? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the radical individualist stance and just say no. That's evil. You only punish bad people. God is bad if He does that. Okay. Why would he punish a whole nation and babies and people who didn't do anything wrong? And he just let, he orders their destruction, lets them be raped and pillaged and die horrible deaths. And you're saying this is your loving God, sir? I'm sorry, I'm not impressed. Uh, no, no, no. Let's please stick to the topic. It, you didn't say anything about raping the uh, the women. It said kill women. Well, okay, that's true. Although there's and it specifically forbids them from pillaging them because that's why they're slaughtering the livestock. I mentioned that earlier. All they're right. Not doing, they're not doing. The so they have any financial incentive to do it. It doesn't. It doesn't increase their wealth at all. They're doing it purely as retaliation for the the exact the self same evils that were inflicted upon them. Now, if it's wrong to punish uh, people in a group, what about warfare? Warfare always inevitably has uh, uh, 
civilian casualties. And when you shoot a soldier who's trying to shoot you, you make his son a uh, an orphan. Well, is it morally wrong. Is it morally wrong for anyone, God or man, to shoot anyone in warfare in wartime? Well, um, why don't I? Uh, hmm. I mean, it might be necessary in self defense or something like that. I'll go ahead and give that to you. Um, Can our nations allowed to defend against nations? In your radical individualist view. Oh man, now that's a push. Um, I'll go. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I think nations are kind of this stupid human construction, and, <laughs> and you are you are you okay. are you are making excuses for you know as Ayn Rand would say, my fellow atheist Ayn Rand would say, you know, yes. the ultimate minority is the individual. So you're wanting me, you're saying that if God is mad at the United States or the state of Michigan where I live, it's okay for God to punish me. I'm saying that if God decides to punish the United States, a punishment which is way, way overdue, there's no way for him to smite, there's no way for him to smite the guilty without making orphans, which would punish the orphans by robbing them of their fathers. Because, and there's no way for, even in your system, of a radical individualism for me to punish, um, let's say, Dr. Robert, Robert Stadler or uh, Tinky Holloway or uh, I'm trying to think of the name of another Ayn Rand villain because they're also despicable. <laughs> uh, there's no way for you to, to, for you to kill a murderer without leaving the murderer's child an orphan if he's got children. Sure. And, to leave his wife, and he, you leave his wife a widow. Is it is it morally correct for you to punish his widow if if uh, by killing by robbing her of a husband? Well, okay, sure. If I gotta kill a bad guy, now you're in the you're in the Bronze Age. If you kill the husband, she's gonna starve because she doesn't have the physical strength to to uh, uh, hitch up the plow and you know work the hand plow to get food out of the ground. So wait a minute, are you now arguing it's an act of mercy to kill the woman so she doesn't have to? No, please do not put words in my mouth and please stick the topic. I didn't say it was an act of mercy. I said, inevitably, even under a radical individualist view, when you punish someone, especially if it's a capital punishment, you also punish their, their anyone dependent upon them. Their, 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 their anybody who loves them. Including if you only lock him in a box for a few years. During those years, the wife and child are deprived of his company and his income. And his support and his protection. Okay, so, so why should I, as a radical individual, be fined just because my father committed a crime? Well, I mean, that's just an unfortunate happenstance that is ultimately the the responsibility of your father, assuming that he was guilty. Of course. Um, yes, let's assume he's guilty. Let's let's assume the Amalekites are guilty of the of the of the dreaded depredations that they visited upon the Jews, and that this is a retaliation for that. All right, so it is still inevitable that, um, yeah, um, like... So your, so your choices are kill them or sell them into slavery? Sure. Well, okay. Sell them or keep them as slaves, I guess. Or if you, if, you, if you sell or keep them as slaves, they will teach their children their religion, which includes child sacrifice. And if you, as God, are trying to wipe out the tradition of child sacrifice, you have to wipe out everyone who believes that and, would, and is trying to carry that tradition on. Now, keep in mind also, the same story that says that God ordered this, this, this uh, massacre also says that he gave the Philistines 400 years of warnings before he did this. And, 100 and years he waited for them warnings. For, 400 years. Where did and, you and see that, sir? I, sh Excuse I challenge me. you. No, I, should say, I should say, not warnings. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know if it says warnings, but it says that he waited 400 years for them to repent. All right, then I'm going to spot that to you because yes, they were told they were told a few times they were going to get crushed, so um, that did happen. Um, so, but I, I guess I'm trying to uh, still now. Get the here's the final. Here's the final factor. Uh, uh, the Jews were uh, moved out of this part of the, the, the world because of famine, and they actually had a right to come back in. Right, it was their land. And ah. the Philistines occupied them. They were gone. So they were squatters. There were squatters on their land. So, yes. so, yes. so, I, my my summation is yes. That what God orders here is a, is a, is a, is a great evil. Is is a uh, it shocks the conscience. But I think that the 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 uh, source of the evil is not the order from God. 
the source of the evil is God trying to make to to make uh, to lessen the evil that's being done by men without at any point overruling man's free will. He doesn't just snap his fingers and turn all the malkits into robots who will stop fighting. All right, sir. By the way, in my in the comments, one of my fellow atheists, Dirac, who loves to come and troll us, um, uh, I want to uh, uh, admonish you, sir. Dirac, you said ISIS also thinks killing is necessary, as if that proves irrelevant. something. Dirac. Irrelevant. Uh, it's irrelevant. Logically irrelevant. Logically irrelevant. irrelevant. The, yeah. uh, the not Off -bound. The Jews certainly. Necessity um, is necessity is a valid reason if you're actually under a threat. If the Amalekites are actually in position to destroy the Jews and wipe you off the face of the map. Uh, if they are not, and you're, you're trying to, and the threat that they pose is completely imaginary, such as the alleged threat of the Jews against the German people during World War II, uh, then it's evil. For the same reason that <laughs> hanging a man that a woman says raped her is valid if the woman's telling the truth is a perfectly rational thing to do. If the woman's telling the truth, perfectly moral if the woman's telling the truth, and perfectly wicked and evil if the woman is not telling the truth. So... The fact that someone else who, for another reason, says blah, blah, blah. Now, keep in mind also that the, the, the three factors that I listed, ongoing attacks uh, against, against, the, uh, against you during your years of weakness by this same group, the inevitability of continued attacks that would, except, for a, except that God intervenes by a miracle, uh, is going to wipe out you and your race, and... Uh, in Bronze Age warfare, no no possible provision being made for uh, merely re relocating the prisoners to some other location. If the Jews had commanded a huge empire like the Persians, God could have perhaps said, "Uproot these people and put them in some other land where they will not threaten you any longer." That's possible, but I, but that's not the situation they were in. All right, Mr. Wright, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna now push back at you a little harder because you keep saying I'm changing the subject, and I I, I don't think sure. I am. So I'm gonna push back well, at you. Uh, objectively, you are. If we're talking about the the topic of whether or not God was evil for ordering this attack and under these terms, then and you talk and you start talking about something else besides that question before that question has been explored, that is changing the subject, whether you think it is or not. Uh, so go ahead. Ask your next question. Uh, well, uh, here would be the uh, I don't. Okay, if you go to Matthew eighteen six, which takes us to the New Testament. But we are agreed, sir, are we not, that Jesus in the New Testament is the God of the Old Testament? Yes. Okay. So ultimately, Jesus ordered this killing himself before he came to earth in the New Testament. Yes. Right? And so now um, here I have uh, um, uh, in Matthew 18, 6, Jesus says, If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. Well, actually, that's that's actually not a very good quote, is it? I must have got the wrong. <laughs> <There's, there's... laughs> I'm glad I'm glad you saw the uh, I'm glad you saw the uh, quicksand before you stepped into it. Uh, if the Americans yeah. right. converted at the last minute, and uh, you know, uh, decide to become followers of God, decide to become Jews. There are provisions in the Jewish law for joining their tribes, and there's uh -huh. at least one, there's at least one race of people who did just surrender to the Jews and uh, and become an allied race. Okay, allied service, I have to admit, you know, it's not it wasn't great, <clears throat> but still. Um. Uh, um. Okay, so what Jesus is saying there when he says "Don't harm little ones" is. He's saying, don't, he's saying don't spread heresy. Don't lie about the nature of God and the Bible. Don't cause them to stumble. Yes. He's, he's warning against people like you, Mr. Atheist, not against people like me. That's correct. Mm. He, doesn't, he, doesn't say, he doesn't say never kill a child under any circumstances. I myself believe it is wrong to kill children under, under any circumstances, but I can imagine that a divine being who knows more than I do, who can foretell that the kids are going to grow up to be Hitler, could order it for reasons that... Uh, that are beyond my understanding. Mm. Mm. So, so, so your argument would be, to, I want to make sure I understand it. I'm staying atheist, so I'm not going to believe you. Um, I mean, um, uh, the, it really does seem like there's, okay, so you're saying Jesus doesn't actually say it's wrong to do these things? 
I mean, I, I really thought he was all about love. I really thought he was all about, you know, turn the other cheek. And, 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 and the argument here. Are you going to talk in vague, it. sort of gassy terms, or are you going to stick to what he actually says? Uh, no, he just never utters the words quoted in the King James Bible, kill no babies. Nonetheless, Christians hold it to be a grave wrong to kill babies, okay, even when they're in the womb. This this kind of thing where you're where you're uh, killing infants and nursing children is shocking, and I cannot imagine a, a good reason why God would have done it. But given in the, given the context of who the Amalekites were and the fact that they had done the exact same thing to the Jews and the fact that they uh, that the the order, as far as I understand, if I if I'm remembering this very correctly, was not obeyed, and the Amalekites did later return and form a a, a mortal threat to them. Because they spared one of the uh, Agog, one of the kings of the Amalekites, if I'm, if I'm remembering who is who. And I could be wrong. Like I said, I could be misremembering the story. Uh, all those factors seem to tie into the idea that God may be ordering something, them to do something horrific. But the evil of it is not caused by him. It's caused by the evil of mankind and the limited circumstances that men have made for themselves because sin was introduced into the world. Warfare becomes a reality of the world. And one of the horrors of war is that innocent people suffer. Okay. Um, um, but, the Jews, but the Jews did not start this war. The Amalekites <laughs> right, <what>? granted <laughs> them free passage through the uh, through the desert without without harassing them and continually attacking them. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and the 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 the, uh, the Philistines committing child sacrifice uh, could have could have decided to adopt a more reasonable uh, primitive religion than, than the one they were using, and they would have avoided God's wrath. You know, a lot of those place, people were uh, practicing child sacrifice and human sacrifice. Okay, so that's that's yeah. there. Yeah, I'm actually looking through so, my Bible. So all, that's, so all that's really being happening is God is visiting on them what they visited on others, which is what justice is. Now, it seems to me to be a very harsh justice, but, you know, what can I say? I'm not, I'm not in their shoes. So as a Christian, I'm willing to, to assume that there's a uh, – uh, that it's a reasonable uh, – but harsh necessity. But All right. So it's not it's not it's not a crime for the sake of crime. It's not an evil act for the sake of committing an evil act. Um. Okay. So I mean, I I, I still can't feel that help. But like you're you're just trying to gloss something here, uh, Mr. Christian. I I don't. Uh. You, you know, we, we well, you guys talk a I good facts, game, but facts, your God facts or don't, facts don't facts don't care about your feelings, and I don't I don't. Uh, either my argument is valid or invalid, and if it's invalid, just point to the flaw in it. Um, ultimately, uh, your God, sir, uh, yes. uh, uh, claims to be all that is good, yet he yes. uh, orders the killing of children. He orders the wiping out of whole population groups. We just, we just discussed that. <sighs> he doesn't order the wiping out of all population groups, just of those guys under that circumstances. Which I went into some detail as to what as to what the factors were involved. At All that right. Point, so if you're not, if you're, if at you're that not, point, it becomes a, at that point it's no longer a black and white issue. It's a judgment call as to what as to how you're going to commit uh, your Bronze Age war against another Bronze Age tribe, given given what resources you have. Okay, it's but either, it's either spare them so that they will be thorns in your eyes for all your generations to come, or wipe them completely off the face of the map because they're because they're so wicked that I've condemned them. Now, keep in mind, we are talking about God, so all these people who are dead are going to be alive again on the world's last day. Okay, so basically you're, you've are you got a little escape hatch there for your God where he's going to make it all right in the end. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Did those words come out of my mouth? I'm sorry, what? Well, Did those words come out of my mouth? Do you have an argument, or do you just have to put words in my mouth to make it seem like I'm saying something I'm not saying? If, if, Murder is wrong for humans because we cannot raise the dead we have murdered. But murder is not wrong for God because he can raise the dead that he's murdered. The, the wickedness of the act is different for the two types of beings. Because for God, it's no different than me killing off a character like Gandalf in my novel I'm writing and then having Gandalf pop up again in book two uh, with wearing a different colored robe, which I can do as the author. Okay, so we're agreed that you're a god will order killing, 
including order killing of children. We're agreed that your God will do that, right? Yes, we're agreed that God will order killing children under under certain limited circumstances. All right, so uh, if God it's told it's you to do this... It's written there in black and white. All right, so, you know, uh, what, what, what if you're just... Whether it's true or not, you become convinced God wants you to kill babies. I mean, uh, what if God comes back and tells you to do this now? Are you going to do it? <laughs> what are there? Any, are there any surrounding circumstances or indicia of uh, of reliability? Why I, I I don't know what you mean. Uh, Jesus appears before you and says, "I need you to go kill the people in the town next door and, and use these dynamite sticks here." Um, are you going to do it, sir? Nothing else. That's it. Compl random people next door that I've never heard of. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do it. No, I'll say no, sir. No, my lord. Okay, why not? Kill me, kill me, kill me in their place. That's what you'd say? Because the order makes Certainly. Because the order makes no sense. Because the order doesn't take place. You see, you, you see the problem with your argument is if you take the if you take the comment out of context, it truly sounds horrific. If you then add in all the context of what's going around, of what's going on in the in the surrounding context, it becomes a question of military prudence. Where it's still horrible, but it's it could be wise. But can't Especially your God just make Jesus. it so that this is all not necessary? Can he? If he did that, wouldn't it be overruling the uh, the free will of the humans involved, including the Amalekites? Can he just can he just obviate the the, uh, the their dignity by removing from them the results of their actions? I would say no. I would say since he's all good, that includes being just as well as kind, as well as loving. And justice requires that there be a recompense for your actions. Do you believe in justice? Do I believe in justice as you an believe, atheist? Uh, do you okay. believe as an atheist that people should be punished for their crimes? Well, yes. Definitely as an atheist, what about, I believe what about, be what about warfare? What about a, 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 when a group of people wrong. have done something? I'm sorry. But that wasn't the question. What about a situation where a group of people has done something wrong and the only available response is to punish the group? Even though you might, even though statistically you're going to punish some innocent people among them, such as the widows and orphans of the many people. Okay. Is that, is uh -huh. that, is that just run just? I'm going to have to say as an atheist that uh, unless I take the ultimate pacifist position, which, to be honest, even as an atheist, I always recognize authentic pacifists pretty much don't exist, because um, uh, uh, almost everybody can be pushed into violence. That's just, you know, that's just our evolutionary heritage. Um, uh, so you're trying to make me as an atheist say it's sometimes okay to kill people. All right, I have to give that to you. It is sometimes kill, and and yeah, sure. In, you might get either in self defense. No, no. In, in limited in limited circumstances, either self defense or as a matter of military prudence during wartime. I have real problems with war, Mr. Wright, but I guess I will have to concede in wartime it might be necessary. Everyone has real problems with war. That's one reason why mankind stands under the condemnation and judgment of Almighty God. Because we invented it, not him. And no animals make war on each other. They what do you mean you didn't invent it? Isn't, uh, isn't the, aren't the first conflicts in the Bible all from these freaking, you know, the Jews attacking people or whatever? Maybe, maybe first I don't know. The in the Bible is Cain killing Abel because he's jealous of him. Right, but then you see the Jews going all over the place after, well, after Egypt. But, I mean, they're, they're rolling all through through Judah and Judea and, uh, and Palestine, whatever you want to call it, and just killing and killing. All right, but I've given it to you already. You said, no, they were warned. They were told repeatedly. There were centuries. They had tried to kill the Jews and had messed them up. And you're even telling me that if I look in the future, one of the one, one of the people where they didn't kill who God said they should kill, they paid a price for it later. Because yeah. and crazy. there's also other groups and other tribes that where God does not get so bloodthirsty in order. He just tells them to make war on those people or something, presumably sparing their livestock, women, and children. And also, just let's be clear on this point: uh, the Jews often uh, do commit crimes for which God punishes them. And sometimes he punishes them by having their neighbors make war on them. 
you know. So just 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 to be clear on that point. No, I'll, I'll give you that. God does sometimes literally have non-Jews attack the Jews to take to teach them a lesson. That that right. happens a lot too in the Old right. Testament. Yeah. As an atheist, you can point out you can point out to me that that is also unfair because innocent Jewish women and children are being killed in the warfare that when the neighbors attack Jews. But again, the question then becomes is is collective punishments and collective rewards ever justified? I myself, from my human point of view, would say, well, maybe not. But any any time, but I can think of examples where leaders have to do are required by necessity to do such things. So, any other examples of God being evil? What about sending people to hell? Well, you know what? I didn't even want to go there um, because that could go a long well, no way. One wants to, no one wants to. No one wants to go to hell. Is there any? What else does God do that's that's so evil? Does he? Uh, he has a homosexual stone. He uh, tells you not to eat pork. Anyone who deprives people of bacon, that must be uh, just terrible. Well, yeah, I mean, it. I think you're still just running away from it, Mister Wright. Your God is freaking. What am I running away from? I am. I am. I am giving. I'm offering you. Uh, I'm offering you examples that you can use. I want to know if you have. I want to know if this was your. If this was shooting your water. If you have another example, because I think I've. I think I've successfully proven that the Amalekite case was one where military necessity required that they behave this way, or at least it's a matter of military prudence. It's not. It's not necessarily wicked, uh, for them to act this way to to a uh, a devout and intergenerational enemy. I mean, if if a group of people from father to son to grandson are all your enemies, the only way to stop them is to is to uh, decimate them. It's, it's, it's to break their culture. It's to wipe them out. All right. Well, otherwise, what else? otherwise what the else? behavior persists. So what what else does God do that's that's so wicked that by his own standard he's evil? What I'm going to do is I'm going to say I need to stop and think that one through because I, okay. I feel like I may be missing something, but I may but go ahead and give you the point. I may go ahead that, and give you the that point. Is a, not only a good one would it be, that's one I did not list in my in my list here no because the other thing the other thing uh, my arguments are almost more like deist arguments dealing with god in the abstract the people who attack christianity as opposed to other religions uh have the advantage of being able to pick look at the bible and try to pick it apart and say here god is behaving in a way that i as a fat and happy modern you know uh, uh person who got my entire civilization from the jews i mean no, no offense, Nazis, but we really do owe them. Basically, uh, otherwise we'd live according to the pagan Roman moral code, in which case none of us would even start to think that killing slaves or or, or foreigners was a bad thing. In fact, we'd in, in, we would go to Cineplex and be watching uh be watching uh, gladiatorial games instead of uh, instead of uh, you know uh, Harry Potter movies. So, all right, well let's let's call this a push and leave it where it is because we're we we're, we're, we're running low on time. We got to finish in the next 15, 20 minutes. And I want to think about this. So I simply want to restate. I simply want to restate what I think your argument back for me is. My argument starting in is, is that Jesus in the New Testament loves children, is all loving and 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 says it's wrong to harm the hair of children. Um, um Except he and, doesn't. And, and, Except you, he doesn't. you don't get to interrupt. Except I'm, he I'm, doesn't. So if you I'm can't, I'm summarizing, I'm says, summarizing, John. I'm summarizing. Let me says, summarize. But you're um, summarizing wrongly. He says, no. anyone who, who leads the children who believe in me astray, meaning the children of Israel that he is teaching his new doctrine to. <clears throat> yes. He's, so he's let me. He's complaining about Pharisees. He's not saying we little babies are, are uh, something that no Christian is ever allowed to, okay. to you know. Let me just you're... restate. Let me just restate what I was right. saying, and then I will right. restate what I feel your response was. Go ahead. Uh, my statement ahead. was is that uh, my argument was is that your God of the Bible is logically inconsistent and therefore impossible, because your God in the New Testament, uh, you know, says all these wonderful things about love your neighbor and turn the other cheek and 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 and, and, and all that. Uh, yet in the Old Testament, he's doing nothing but beating you know ordering the killing of and he's ordering killing and slaughtering all the time he's really quite cruel i have to interrupt and, and, and listening, i'm not done i'm still summarizing listening, I'm still summarizing. listening to you make all these vague gassy assertions that are not tied into any anything evidential is like listening to fingernails on a blackboard to me he i'm, I'm to 
does say those things, nor does God say those things. In both cases, they say specific things that you are that you're botching what they said. So you're not letting me finish. Stick to the, so let me stick finish. To the fact. The reason why I'm not letting you finish is because I can't stand you just misstating what what you yourself said your argument was. So uh, to, to, to summarize, that. my stick statement was that. Okay, now please give me a minute un uninterrupted. I, I started will. out by saying that your God is not consistent and therefore is logically impossible. Um, and uh, uh, because he seems one way in the New Testament and completely another in the other. Um, and you pointed out the Bible verses I, uh, you, you, you say, the Bible verses from the New Testament I used do not really support that. And I think you did a very good job of making that point. I'm going to allow the audience and everybody else to look through the Bible and look through the New Testament, all the times people Jesus talks, and see where he ever as explicitly says it's wrong to order, it's wrong to go to war, or it's wrong to order slaughter of um, um, of, of, of children. Um, so you did a good job there. My 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 argument was. Your God from the Old Testament and New Testament is is completely contradictory and therefore impossible. And your response was, there does not appear to be a, a real conflict here um, because Jesus does not say any of these things are never to be done or wrong. Let's think about that and let's see if anybody comes up with any other examples in the next week. Uh, I actually think you did do a pretty good job there. And I even learned something as an atheist. Tell me, so, tell, me when I can, tell me when I have the floor again because I, I still have an objection. You still have an objection. Okay, go ahead and make your objection. When you say to your audience, look through the Bible and see where it ever says that Jesus doesn't says never go to war, never kill children, you're making the a mistake that many atheists make, assuming that Jesus uh, propounded something fundamentally different from what the Ten Commandments say. And I think a Christian who makes that claim should say that Christ propounded uh, perhaps a higher standard. He still says murder is wrong, but that if you hate your neighbor in your heart, that's like murder. That's as bad as murder. He still says lust is wrong, adultery is wrong, but if you lust after a woman in your heart, that's the same as adultery, and so on. But he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't, no Christian, I think, should say that Christ invented the idea that murder and adultery are wrong. Everyone, all cultures, all historical periods, have established this. Say, we all know killing innocent children is wrong. Everyone of every culture of all time. Sometimes people think it's okay to kill, you know, your enemy's children because they're going to grow up to be soldiers who will fight you in the future. But generally, it's not. I don't want. I don't want you to create the impression that we, uh, Mr. Atheist, that we Christians think we're proposing a new moral code. We're proposing a deepening of an existing moral code, an organic outgrowth of it, a deeper insight into an existing moral code. The di one major difference between Christians and Jews, and this is not part of our discussion, but is that we, we abolish certain parts of their ceremonial law, be that as it may, that's not really part of the discussion. But what we're doing is promising a way out of the, the trap of guilt and fear and terror that comes from knowing we've violated the moral law of the universe. Even people who don't know where the moral law comes from, everyone has some sort of sense of right and wrong, unless they're psychopathic. See? So the reason why I'm raising the second objection is it's a very minor objection. It's just based on the way you phrased it. I don't think it's fair to ask your fellow atheists to look through the Bible to see where Jesus says, you know, don't kill innocent children. Because <laughs> he doesn't have to say that. We all already know that. What he's, what well, he's saying is he's trying to, he's trying to deepen the understanding of what Moses was told at Sinai and what Noah was told when the world was just eight people. But it's also the same thing that Aristotle, Socrates, or Confucius, or Buddha said about right living, about doing unto others as you would be doing unto you. The, the moral law is, I think, universal. I think everyone has the same basic axioms, the same basic principles. What Christianity does is show uh, a way to salvation, a way to, to get to uh, to make yourself clean again after we're already dirty, if that makes All right. sense. Yeah, um, I, I, I and we'll have to leave it there because an atheist, as an atheist, I'm simply not going to concede without thinking much harder about it. And this is why I'm going to go back and review my 
<clears throat> New Testament because my argument to remind you was that your God is impossible because he's logically inconsistent. And so now really? what you have just said is that he's not logically consistent and you pointed out some problems I have in the verses. So I'm going to go back and look through the verses to see where I, if I can find an actual logical inconsistency. And that's what all you'll find, I think, if you, if you look at it carefully, is what you'll find is you'll find that Jesus, many of his most profound sayings that we Christians love to quote are actually just Jewish sayings that the rabbis in the Old Testament repeated long before Jesus said them. And that's actually a strong reason why we say he's the same God. It's because he didn't change his message. He was calling people to repent. He was calling people to go to turn back to the way it was originally. For example, the Jews had a law for them to get divorced. Jesus says it was not that way originally. Go go back to the to the previous uh, to the previous uh, higher law, which is no divorce. For example, but by all means, Mr. Atheist, study the Bible carefully. I'm study going carefully. to try, and I'm going to leave it out as a challenge too. Can anybody find the logical inconsistency? Like maybe I missed the verse where Jesus said something that was logically inconsistent there, but otherwise. All I'll say to you, Mr. Christian, as my closing argument is that, yes, I will review it to see if I missed, if we or you missed some logical inconsistency, get back to you if I can. And maybe next week, we'll, or well, uh, next show, um, we'll take on your argument from nature, unless somebody, because you have another argument called the argument from nature, we didn't get it to, that, to it today. Uh, maybe we'll do that on our next show, unless somebody in the audience uh, comes up with, you know, uh, objections to anything we've said here that they weren't that, that are worth discussing more. Um, we also actually didn't get to even the argument from evil, because your argument was that God is evil, but the argument from evil is that God permits evil, even if He Himself is not the author of it. And the and, and the uh, the objection there is, how can a benevolent God permit such such a thing to happen? So yeah, no, we. It is a slightly a lot different of... argument, and we might come back yeah. to it. So we do hope we do invite the audience to see if I missed anything as an atheist, if other atheists miss anything. I was actually repeating uh, somebody else's argument, but I, I think I represented him fairly well. I and, think you did. I think it's, I think it's a strong argument. I'm not sure my argument was as as a, as a coherent or satisfying as I, as, a, as it should have been. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I, if I were an atheist, would be persuaded by that argument. Well. Because... Well, I, I, I'm at least I am at least flummoxed at the moment because I can't prove my initial claim that he's inconsistent. So we'll leave it at that, and 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 I'll think about it because you did give a good response there. I, what I want to know, I'll send this to Skylar Fiction and any other buddy who wants to. Did I miss something? Um, the other question you want to ask your audience is: Did I correctly remember who the Amalekites were? Because I think I might be confusing him with with another group. That is not the guys who are responsible for trying to wipe out the Jews in the time of Esther. So that well, I don't know. Because if, if, if that, you, if that was I not the case, you. then that argument falls. That that If I'm remembering it incorrectly, then that part of the argument fails. That, that falls on its face. But, I will even as an atheist tip it to you, though. Even if you are wrong in that particular case, it's just one example of God ordering these slaughters. And you gave the general answer, which is that, um, yeah, these were sworn enemies who were given repeat warnings. Um, and uh, failing to wipe them out actually had negative consequences later. So we'll leave that there. That was pretty good. Now, I don't know, uh, John, do you actually want to do a show next Wednesday night? It would be the well, night, I, it's, it's, which it's, sometimes people aren't busy. I won't be, but. It is right after uh, Christmas, and I think I will be still uh, recovering from uh, uh, breaking all of my, or being relieved of all my Advent vows. And so for, uh, you know, for 20 days now, I've gone without coffee. So I'm probably <laughs> going to be so drunk and so hyped up on caffeine. No, I, I think we have to skip it. Let's do it on the second, please. But we'll, we'll find one of our earlier shows and we'll do a rerun on Christmas. Or I might do a special uh, Christmas hangout with the Red Pill Religion crew, depending on uh, what people want to do next Wednesday. So, uh, uh, all right, everybody, tell us how you think we did and tell us what you think we missed. Um, this was me uh, making atheist arguments for a Christian, and he uh, and you could tell you can let us know how you feel we did. Also, everybody, please again, I remind you to find us on uh, redpillreligion.com. If you lose us here on YouTube or other platforms, we're always on redpillreligion.com. We could use your financial as well as uh, legal support. Also, be sure uh, uh, spiritual support as well as financial. Also, be sure to visit uh, sci-fi-right.com. Look at all the cool stuff he's got there, especially, of course, all the books. If you click on the works link, 
you'll get all the cool books that he's written that you can uh, hey, read. And I yeah. have a free Christmas story up this week. Oh, and you have a science fiction Christmas story. You have a science yeah. fiction Christmas story. Let's find that real quick. What's it just to point it's it called, out to people? It's Nativity? called Nativity. Yep. Okay, so Ron's also look on his blog for a t story called a Christmas tale, a science fiction Christmas tale called Nativity. It came from a book that Castalia House published a few years ago. So awesome. All right, everybody. Well, we will be here tomorrow night um, as we are here every night. Um, please check out sci fi right.com, check out redpillreligion.com, and uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. May I make one last comment? Go for it. I think that you did very well as as the atheist argument, except for one thing. Yeah. You didn't call me a mean white man. Oh, that's well, always that's always a clincher in an argument. That's always always wins automatically. Well, mean mad white man, mean mad white man. You, you forgot right? misogynist. Mis you forgot well, misogynist. That's, that's given. That's given. <laughs> as a Christian, I'm automatically a misogynist. Uh, ex <laughs> excuse me, I have to go. I have to go bow to my uh, my pagan statue of the Virgin Mary now. So, there you go. There you go. All right. Well, God bless us, everyone. God bless us, Merry everyone. Merry Christmas. God bless us. Merry Christmas.